three, two, one. Welcome to The Peaceful Truth, the podcast where we talk about everything from feminism, feminist issues, and more. You are joined by your co-hosts, Megan Hohart and Kenzie Mikek. Kenzie, it's our third episode in a row. Not for you guys, it's been three weeks. <laughs> but for us, it's been an hour. <laughs> Yeah, so we were recording episodes back to back because Megan and I have pretty crazy schedule in the month of June. Yeah, it, I don't know what's going on. We're just traveling like crazy, I think. We busy girls. So what are we covering today? Women in history that have inspired us. So I took it a little bit differently than you. I'm sorry. That's okay. I feel like I didn't go into that much depth about what my idea was. So what's what's so your the idea? only thing different that I did is I did like famous women in history, but there is a little bit of controversy with them. So I don't necessarily agree with every single thing that they stand for. Oh, okay. So wh- how I I did this podcast was women that I thought are cool. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So my women have made history, but some things are controversial, and I don't see eye to eye but I think that that goes with life like no one's perfect no one's perfect you're not going to agree with everything that they do you're not going to agree with everything they say yeah everybody has those days so um this is going to be a little embarrassing my first lady is Florence Nightingale and I didn't know she was a real person until I researched this what did you think she was? I thought she was a fake person I thought it was a play I thought it was a fake play I thought Florence Nightingale was the star of the show I didn't know that she was an actual human being that reminds me of Aaron, my brother-in-law. He used to think that green apples <laughs> were not ready apples to be eaten, like ripe. Like you couldn't eat them. They're not yeah. ready to be yeah, eaten. Yeah, like red apples are the only kinds you can eat. Oh my God, that guy. Yeah, he for sure thought that. And when did this thought change? Freshman year of college. Oh my late. God, 18 years old. For 18 years, he didn't eat a green Maybe apple? 19, yeah. He was giving Chelsea crap for bringing an apple back to the table that was green. And she was like, why? I don't get it. Like, I like Granny Smith. Yeah. And he was like, you can't eat that yet. And she's <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Did he think the same thing for green grapes? Maybe. We all have to ask. Yeah. We or, but do you know that all, I think this might be true. Some people might be like, what the hell, Gunsy? That's not, you just made that up. But bell peppers are just different stages of life for bell peppers. I heard that before, actually. Okay, good. Whew. Didn't make that one up. But to me, uh, can I just say that I think they, they taste all the same. Well, because they're kind of the same. Do you think that the green and the yellow and the red taste the same and the orange? No, and I also feel like some Skittles don't taste different either. Oh, my gosh. They all taste the same. What about M&M's? Oh, well, Yeah. They're just chocolate on the inside. It's just food dye. But I feel like Skittles like act like they are different flavors. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay. Anyway, Florence Nightingale <laughs> is an actual human being. She was a live person. Okay. Did you know that? Yeah. What did she do? I don't know, but okay. I knew she was a historical figure. Okay. She was lived on this earth from 1820 <laughs> to 1910. And she was the founder of modern nursing. That's what she did. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's very cool. So she established a nursing school at St. Thomas Hospital in London. And this was the first secular nursing school in the world. International Nursing Day is celebrated on her birthday around the entire world. She also did a couple of other things, too, outside of nursing. She helped abolish prostitution laws that were abnormally harsh for women. That's nice. Awesome back in her day. Um, She helped expand women's jobs in the workforce. Also awesome back in the day. Um, She exhibited a gift for mathematics from an early age, and she excelled in the subject. Later, she became a pioneer in the visual presentation of information and statistical graphics. So she didn't create the pie chart, but she was like one of the people who was like, look, this is a pie chart and wow. look what we can do with it. That's pretty cool. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then she seems smart. She's extremely smart. Her attention also turned to the health of the British Army in India, and she demonstrated that bad drainage, contaminated water, 
overcrowding and poor ventilation were causing the high death rate in India. She concluded that the health of the army as well as the people of India had to go hand in hand. So she campaigned to improve the sanitary conditions of the country as a whole. So she kind of had, you know, her hands in a lot of different things. Why was she controversial? She was controversial. This is all from her Wikipedia article. Um, there was a little bit of controversy, which was really strange because she was super, she came from a really wealthy family and she was really rich. And so she was supposed to only be like a wife and a mother. Like she wasn't supposed to go be a nurse and she wasn't supposed to go do all these things with math. But at the same time, she still felt like women and men weren't equal. Um, well, I think, yeah, I think it's hard when the society has told you one thing your whole life but she was still pretty uh, revolutionary for her time i'm gonna find the exact quote about why she was controversial on wikipedia but until then you can go to your first lady so neither of mine are controversial they are both really cool ladies <laughs> well they well chrissy teigen <laughs> spoiler alert is a little bit controversial but harriet tubman is one of the women I wanted to talk about. So I kind of took this podcast again, like people that I just thought were inspiring. Um, and I've just kind of been drawn to. So like Harriet Tubman, for some reason, I've always been a history, like bit of a history nerd. But when I was a kid, I just thought Harriet Tubman was the most brave, badass person I feel like I had ever heard of. But like, I just thought she was cool, brave, selfless as a kid. And I was super drawn to her. We even had like a wax museum where we could read, where we could like read a little bio about them. And she was like the person I really wanted to read a bio on. And I really loved her. Um, so f according to PBS.org, this is where I've got ev everything from um, that. She was one of the most famous underground railroad conductors. So what is the Underground Railroad? It is a vast network of people who helped fugitive slaves escape to the north. This is all in the U.S. Um, she was always ready to stand up for someone else. Tubman blocked a doorway to protect another field hand from an angry overseer. And this is when she got her famous injury. The overseer picked up and threw a two pound weight um, at her at her, and it fell short and it striked her on the head. So she was hit with a weight in the head. I didn't know that. Um, and she never fully recovered from the blow, um, which subjected her to sleep spells, um, which she would fall into deep sleep. I just thought she was so brave to continue on to do all this cool stuff after that significant event in her life. So in 1849, in fear that she, along with other slaves on the plantation, were to be sold, Tubman resolved to uh, run away. She set out one night on foot with assistance uh, from a friendly white woman. Tubman was on her way. She followed the North Star by night, making her way to Pennsylvania and soon after Philadelphia, where she found work and saved her money. The following year, she returned to Maryland and escorted her sister and sister's two children to freedom. So her family to freedom. She made the dangerous trip back to the South soon to rescue her brother and two other men. But on her third return, she went to go find her husband to find he had taken another wife. So he was a free um, man and she escaped for a few years. But then when she came back, he took another wife, which... Maybe that was not good and he had no idea like where she had gone. Mm -hmm. Like we don't know the background. Maybe he thought she died. Maybe he would never see her again. <laughs> um, but, but on her third return. Okay. So undeterred, she found other slaves leaking freedom even after her husband had left her and she took them to the north, making po li uh, positive of a bad situation. She then returned to the south again and again. She divide clever, devised clever techniques that helped make her uh, forays successful, including the master's horse and buggy for the first leg of the journey, leaving on a Saturday night since runaway notices want to be placed in newspapers until Monday morning. So they had extra time turning about and heading south. And if she encountered possible slave hunters and carrying a drug to use on a baby, if it's crying, <laughs> might put the fugitives in danger. So that happened. But she even carried a gun. Now this part, She's a strong-minded woman. She carried a gun, which she used to threaten the other fugitives if they became too tired or decided to turn back, telling them, you'll be free or you're going to die. Oh, man. Like, you already made your choice to come with me. You're not going to screw up my mission. The rest. Right. Which, 
That's an ethical decision. Ethical dilemma. But she made her choice. Dang. She stuck by it. Yeah. But anyway, I had just, as a kid, I just thought she was the coolest woman ever. I found why Florence Nightingale was a little controversial. Okay. So, although much of Nightingale's work improved the lot of women everywhere, Nightingale was the, of the opinion that women craved sympathy and were not as capable as men. Oh, no. So Florence. Florence, like, dude. Florence. You're, you're standing up for us. You're making sure that prostitutes don't have as bad of law enforcement. You're giving us jobs, but then you think that we crave sympathy? Florence. Come on, get it together, Florence. <laughs> Florence is a good name, though. As well as Nightingale. Name. Both are good names. Nightingale sounds like a good porno movie. <laughs> what? Nightingale. <laughs> Heyo. Heyo. No, just me. <laughs> um, so say we're going to say the best for last, so Kenzie gets to go last. But my next one is Mother Teresa. Woohoo! I remember when she passed away. Do you? Yeah, but maybe we shouldn't compare Chrissy Teigen as better <laughs> than Mother Teresa. <laughs> okay, more um, uh, current. current in the current year. But who knows? I mean, she's kind of my spirit animal. I look up to her. It's subjective. So Mother Teresa was on this earth from 1910 to 1997. Why do you keep saying she's on this earth? <laughs> she was on this earth from 1910 to 1997. She wasn't on Mars for any of that time either. And I remember when she died. She died very closely around the time that Princess Diana died. Mm -hmm. um, and she was Albanian, Indian, Roman, Catholic, nun, and missionary. So I think she was born in Albania, but then she was a Indian... India citizen. Oh, cool. Um, and then she was also Catholic, obviously. We're S dog sitting, so if you hear that sneezing in the background, <laughs> it's a doggo. Um, so she did some awesome things. In 1950, she founded the Missionaries of Charity, which had over 4,500 sisters and was active in 133 countries in 2012. The congregation manages home for people dying of HIV and AIDS, leprosy, tuberculosis. It also helped with soup kitchens, dispensaries, and mobile clinics. Um, it helped with orphanages, schools, and family counseling programs as well. Awesome work. Awesome things. Can't talk highly enough about her, except that there is some controversy. Dun, dun, dun. The controversy. Um, she was anti-abortion. I think that's part of um, her Catholic upbringing right. or decision to be Catholic. Makes sense. Um, she also, this is a really interesting thing. This is more controversy if you're a Catholic because she did express a lack of belief in God. Oh, wow. And she was a Catholic nun for like her entire life. Dang. So that's kind of like empowering for me to be like, that's awesome that she's kind of standing up and being able to speak her truth. Like, hey, guess what? Sometimes there's darkness and there's shadows. And sometimes I wonder if God exists. Yeah. Like, good honor for being able to stand up and say that sometimes. Yeah. So then she would go back to her faith. So the faith is believing without seeing, believing without hearing. Like, you know, there's no physical proof of it. So she would go back to her faith and say, I believe, even though... There are dark times when maybe I, the science and the, the, the lack of evidence makes me not believe. So some interesting controversies there. She also was uh, controversial in some of her uh, missionaries that housed the home of the dying. Um, some say that the conditions weren't um, up to par and her, her, uh, kind of schooling was that you're supposed to die like Jesus and not have like all of the best of everything. And so that's some controversy too, because it's like you're giving these homes to these people who are dying, but yet you're not making them suffer by any means, but maybe they're not getting all of the wonderful best of the best. Does that make sense? It's interesting. Yeah. So um, that was some controversy as well. Very interesting. Well, she seems like a nice lady, though. Yeah. <laughs> Mother Teresa, I'm like, she seems great. <laughs> Chrissy Teigen! Chrissy Teigen! She's our last one. 
So who is she? I love she? how, wait, can we just list the people that we talked about so far? Florence Nightingale, Mother Teresa, Harriet Tubman, and then now Chrissy Teigen. I took the direction of this podcast super differently, <laughs> this topic. I just thought women who were influential, who I'm inspired by. I mean, I cannot speak highly enough of Chrissy. I think that... I, we're not also putting... Yeah. We're just talking about women we find inspirational. She is extremely hilarious in every sense of the word. Yes. And she's a really good cook. Yes. If you don't know her, she is an American model and a host of the Lip Sync uh, Off. So it's like a show where celebrities com- come on and do a lip sync battle of different famous songs. I've never seen it. Me either. But hey, that's kind of how she got famous um, a little bit even more. She's also married to uh, John Legend, who's a really nice guy, it seems. Um, she's hila- Why I love her is she's hilarious and super unapologetic. Super. You can say that five times. She is so unapologetic. She does whatever she wants. She's so real. So we're just going to talk about Twitter for a few minutes here <laughs> and what she's done. One, she's been in an epic twitter battle with the president of the united states who has blocked her oh and really now on a side note a federal judge has now ruled it unconstitutional for him to block people on twitter because that's against the first amendment because he's a po- like someone who's a politician so he's not allowed to limit freedom of speech and uh, chrissy tweeted at him after that happened oh, i didn't know that that happened yep is it my turn to talk about the butthole? Yeah, talk tweet. about the butthole. This was the best tweet. Um, this is from Chrissy Teigen. I can confirm postpartum life is 90% better when you don't rip to your butthole. Baby boy, one point. Luna, zero. <laughs> and then the first comment is literally epic. Um, NH at Gatun underscore CZ replied, my baby boy will be 25 in August and my butt still hurts. (laughs) It got 3.8K likes and 88 retweets her saying that. How hilarious is that? That's epic. Yes. That's epic. Um, Another thing is she recently, talking about postpartum, she posted herself in her postpartum mesh underwear on Instagram breastfeeding her son and her her daughter Luna by her side oh so very real she loves food she posts herself cooking about food constantly which is great and it makes me hungry all the time she has a few cookbooks too um she posts things when she looks natural or more real she even has series of like just different goofy characters that she makes up that she'll like do sometimes on Snapchat or Instagram and just being goofy in the same voice. Um, so, and she's opened up about postpartum depression too. Mm -hmm. And she's just constantly been fearless and relatable. Um, she shows herself in unflattering ways while getting ready. I don't know. I just think she's really funny. She is. I don't see how you can't. We're following on all the platforms. Dude, we're eating up everything that she's saying and we love it. Does she have any funny tweets that you see right now? Not that I see right now. Okay. I'll let you know what I find. But she's just a good guy. And then John Legend seems she's like... She's a good person. <laughs> she's a good person. And John Legend seems like such a good person too. Yeah, they're so cute. Together. I hope that he's really that good. And Luna is so sweet. She looks exactly like John. She does. With the hair. Yeah. It's so cute. We're in love with them. We love them. But yeah, we just wanted to talk about something uplifting and nice about these ladies. Okay, Megan. Well, anything. I think we've like, so this is our third episode and we've kept saying positive things that we're looking forward to this week. Can you think of another? Uh, I only have to work one day this week. I only have to work Tuesday. How come? Because I'm going to Texas. Oh, wow. I didn't realize how much time you're taking off. And Monday is Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Um, my positive thing is I've been celebrating my friend's birthdays all weekend. So we've been having fun. Nice. Yay. And we're going to go out on a rooftop bar tonight. And it's going to be gorgeous. What rooftop? 
called Nest. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. It's really cool. Well, thank you guys for listening. Adios, amigos. Adios, ladies. Bye.